Hi, this is Kat Kerr, and I'm the author of Revealing Heaven, but my favorite title would be Child of God. You know, God says you have to be like a little child to enter into the kingdom of heaven, and I really have an understanding of why he says that, because when you get there, you're going to have fun. You know, God may be eternal, but he is not an old-minded God. If that were so, he wouldn't want you to be like children. That means you trust him completely. That means you receive whatever it is he gives you with gladness and joy. And one of the reasons he enjoys taking me to heaven is I never question him. I don't sit down and try to figure everything out. I don't have to look for 50 references to share what I saw there. I'm like a big kid. I can't wait to tell you what he allowed me to see there. And today I'm going to give you um, a report on what it's like to live there in heaven. One of the times he caught me up to heaven, what I was allowed to see in the life of a 13-year-old girl who had passed away in February of 2001. Um, my mother and I did hospitality at our church, and we had just finished a four-day event. We were very tired. But because we served our pastor and his wife, we allowed them to ask special privileges from us, and that's exactly what they did. We had a phone call from the pastor's secretary, pastor's wife's secretary, and she asked if we could clean the house of an elderly woman who had just hosted out-of-town guests for a funeral. Now, this funeral was not held at our church. It was held about 50 miles away in a different part of our city. So we did not know these people that I'm about to share you, share about. And uh, we never met them before. Uh, we had never been to this person's house before. So my mother said, yes, we would be glad to clean the home. So the next day we, sh we showed up, and my mom told me I could go ahead and start dusting the fireplace mantle. She would go start in the kitchen of the bathroom. And so I'm standing there dusting the fireplace mantle, and all of a sudden I hear the Lord say to me, I'd like to give Melody a message. And I keep dusting, and I say, well, who's Melody? And he says, that's Marissa's mom. And I go, well, who's Marissa? And he says, that's the young girl who just died in the ski accident. You're standing in her grandmother's home. I want her mother to know that I did not cause her daughter's death. But I had a plan for her life in heaven. And I had to decide, was I done with her on earth? Did I have something more important for her to do in heaven? And I want her to know that she's living with her great-grandfather and he's taking her somewhere to have lots of fun. Well, the Lord kept talking. Then all of a sudden, I was no longer standing in front of the fireplace. I was on a path in heaven. The Lord told me to hurry up, and so I could hear the people. There was three people on the path in front of me. Now, you have to understand, when you're caught up to heaven, it's not just like walking down the path of any, any woods down here on earth. Angels are flying by you. The flowers sing to you when you walk by. There's light shows continually going on in heaven. You hear music coming from everything because everything worships God in heaven. And so it was hard to uh, not focus, but I finally got up there, and I heard this young, beautiful girl. She has strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes. I knew that was Marissa, and she was looking into the eyes of someone who did not look like a great-grandfather. He looked like he was in his 20s. He, she was saying things to, her, to him about her mom. When I see her again, I'm going to kiss her on both cheeks. I'm going to share everything that's happened to me. I wish, I, I wish she knew that I was a youth leader in heaven. And so she just kept sharing, and I was listening, and we got closer. I could hear people laughing and hollering and yelling, and all of a sudden, I see a roller coaster in the distance, and I'm shocked. And the Lord said, that's the rush. That's our largest roller coaster, and that's where her great-grandfather was taking her. I got close enough to see the people. This roller coaster, this cars would zip up to the top, go all the way to the bottom, and zip back up and leap off the track go across the sky to the other side of the track. And I thought, they sure don't do that on earth. And so she kept talking about her mom. And then the next thing I knew, I was back down in front of the fireplace. I was really shocked. And so I called my mom. We called the pastor's secretary, and, and uh, they gave us Melody's phone number. I went home, typed everything down I heard, and she agreed to meet me at a mall. And so I started sharing with her that I had seen her daughter in heaven. And I saw her great-grandfather taking her on ro to go take on roller coaster rides, and she almost fainted. I asked her if she wanted me to keep reading, and she just motioned to keep going. I kept telling her all the things I heard, and Melody would laugh, then she would cry. She began to shake, and I knew what she was going to say when I was finished. I asked her, do you believe I've seen your daughter in heaven? Do you believe God wants you to have this information? And she looked at me, she goes, I don't know you, I never met you. But you told me things only my daughter Marissa would know. Every day I dropped her off at school, she would kiss me on both cheeks. And when she came home from school, she would share everything that happened in her life. 
And I, she said, the thing I really know that convinced me that you had been to heaven is the day before her funeral, I was in her room, and I looked under her bed and found a journal she had kept in 1995. Now, this experience I had happened in February of 2001, so this was some time ago. Melody said, I had never even seen this journal before, so I started reading it. And she said, on one of the pages, I read these words. Last night, I dreamed I died early and went to heaven early. My great-grandfather met me, and I went on roller coaster rides. I saw tons of mansions, and it was wonderful, but he only gave me a peek, and then I fell back down to earth. How amazing is that? I was so shocked. There's no way I could have known about that journal or the words that were written in it, and yes, the very thing that the Father showed me. He wanted people to know that heaven is real, but it's not just a literal place. You're actually going to have fun. She told me that that information was like receiving kisses from heaven, that she loved her daughter very much. And then the Lord allowed me to share with her what she was doing in heaven. He said it was time for all the youth in heaven to begin their part in rehearsing the, their, the entertainment for the celebration of the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he looked down through time and eternity, and he picked Marissa for that position. So just because one of your loved ones goes home early, it doesn't mean that it was a punishment or that the enemy had his way. Sometimes it's because God has a reward for their life. Melody shared with me that Marissa had mentored all the kids in her elementary school and her middle school by loving them. And she said she could understand why God would have picked her daughter. What a high honor to be chosen for in heaven. But God wants you to know when you go there, you are going to have a life filled with adventure. And your loved ones who live there, uh, they miss you, they love you. But you know what? They're with the one who loves them more than anybody. So I hope you make the right choice with your life and you understand that when you go home to heaven, it's like living and moving to the most amazing place you'll ever live. So if you want to know more, you can read my book, Revealing Heaven, or go to my website, revealingheaven.com. And I hope you come to know the Lord and give your life to him.